Good morning, Anna. Where's your buddy at? You looking for her too? The corn's getting tall, and it's gonna be an awesome day. Oh, there she is. They found each other. <laughs> that was pretty unexciting. Morning. How you doing? Good. We got some morning stuff done. I'm gonna move the trucks here now. Later this week, these diesel tanks that are sitting on this old bin pad, they need to be empty because we're gonna move them across the yard over towards where they used to be, which is right over here next to the new shed. And then this concrete pad is being tore out and there's gonna be a new concrete pad going up there that is actually 60 feet because the new bin is much bigger than the one that used to be there. And in the meantime, some of the soybeans have hit the point where they need to be sprayed. The majority of them are not big enough yet and the weeds are not bad enough. But we do have a few fields that do need some spray on them. But the sprayer needs fuel and I parked it in here backwards. The fuel fills on the other side. Yeah, sometimes in the summer I wear shorts like a real farmer. Fueling. Sprayer's fueled. Get some air going in the truck. We need a little air pressure built up to be able to run the pumps on this trailer. 12 gallons of AMS, gravity fed. 18 gallons of glyphosate. Our Roundup tote, glyphosate went empty, so we don't quite have what we need. We're gonna lift that off there, put a new tote on. In the meantime, I could pump in our Enlist, give the trailer access to air, and now that tote's filling. This trailer is ridiculously handy. About four inches. Right there. Can you move it to the west of here? It'll be crooked. You can set it there, it'll work. I know there's a whole bunch of you out there wondering, and yes, this is the egg saver glyphosate we got from Farmers Business Network delivered right to the farm. Well, now the dad's loaded. He thinks he should take off and grab lunch. We'll let that agitate. I'm gonna go put some fuel in this truck. And by go put fuel in it, I mean move it 50 feet to the east so I can reach it with the hose. More fueling. Can I get a grilled chicken ranch wrap with fries and a bacon cheeseburger? I gotta eat too. No, I'm not eating them both for myself. I got the burger for Onyx. Figured I'd eat lunch in the hobby shed because nobody knows to look for me here this time of day. And it's where the Dr. Pepper was. Now, what we wanna do in the back of this shed is we got some equipment moved. We had a real nice pad here before it rained the day they started working on this thing. So when they dug down to dig these poles in, we ended up getting a lot of clay and black dirt mixed in with our beautiful gravel pad. So we're gonna scrape two or three inches of that kind of mix between gravel and clay and black dirt. We're gonna put it back here around the corner where we're building the road around the shed anyway. So we're just gonna move it back there, dump it there so it's gonna be underneath that road. And then we got fresh gravel to bring in here and seal up everything along the sides of these walls to keep the birds and the critters out. And then we'll get some shelving in here in the back and put some concrete under the doors. That's gonna come later, a couple of weeks hopefully. It's been nearly 24 hours. You got something, something on your gums there? Anna? I ended up just busy yesterday afternoon. I set the camera down and forgot about it as I sometimes do. It's mostly a quiet morning. We got dad loaded up with the sprayer and he headed down south. I'm gonna fold this, uh, fold this fill hose up, fire this truck up, and then head down south and load him up again. I missed. I tried doing it all fancy one-handed because I was holding the camera. You know, it's plenty warm out here. I think before I leave, I should probably lose the sleeves. 
That's better. Isn't it, Didge? Oh, I got everything all dusty. It is so nice to be able to just spin a valve and fill the tanks here. Well now I just wait. This would be a good time for me to check the weather and the markets. According to my phone here, it should be pretty sunny out right now. Okay, so that's working. Watch closely for the individual row shut off. Every single nozzle on there is controlled individually for the swath control so you're not overlapping on stuff. So you can see here the right side will probably turn on before the left side. Oh, he's going to hit it straight enough. Here they come. There's a lot of really cool technology into that sprayer. Some of it that I can't follow yet. I can get in there and run that thing, and I do just fine, but I know that that thing is capable of more than I am at the moment. He came back with his booms up, so I'm thinking he's probably empty. I'll get back in that thing and run it some more, but in the meantime, Dad likes sitting in there and I don't mind loading trailer at all, so this is what we got going for now. I don't think either of us are picky about where we're at. Figured I'd take a little stroll out into the field and see what kind of job the spray has done so far. I sprayed this a couple of days ago. This field is really variable, so there's a lot of low areas in it. It's got a lot of cockle burr. And for whatever reason this year it had a lot of water hemp. Water hemp really is our problem weed right now. We end up getting patches like this and they're really hard to kill. Roundup doesn't do a great job with them. Luckily uh, the Enlist spray that we've been using here seems to do a good job. I don't like that they're green but they look awfully sick so I think we I think we've done the job here. Although they are pretty green I guess we'll give it a couple more days. This weed has just become so tough to kill and they get hundreds of thousands of seeds per plant so if you let one get old and grow all those seeds and you send it through a combine you end up with patches like this it's an amaranth and it's a cousin of palmer amaranth which is a really big problem down south we don't have a big issue with it up here yet hopefully we just don't well i had to speed out of the field and get to my pickup just got word Onyx is up real soon at the shooting park. That's the Alexandria, Minnesota shooting park that we are part owners of. And they are having actually the Minnesota State High School Championship with the USA Clay Target League this week. So we've got 82 or 8,400 kids going through, which equals almost 30,000 total people here in the next week, week and a half. So I got to get over there and, and watch Onyx shoot off his next couple rounds. Spray in the morning as much as you can if you've got dew. I was not kidding you guys. This is the world's single largest shooting event. And it was the world's biggest shooting event before we got involved. Don't think that we brought this in. We're, we're just fortunate enough to be a part of this now. This is the real deal. It's like a state fair out here. This is really cool. Here's a fun fact. Over the last several years, the USA Clay Target League, in their high school league, they have fired off over 200 million rounds of trap, which is over 5 billion shots. Not one single injury. Trap shooting is the safest high school sport. Look at it. It's Onyx Johnson right there getting ready to go. He wants to talk to the camera, obviously. Like 
Well, not too bad. Onyx shot pretty well. I'm gonna take off and head back to the farm now. We got more going on there, but this is really cool to see. There's gonna be between, roughly between 700 and 1,000 new shooters that come in here every single day for about nine days. And that's new ones. Every day we rotate that many out and bring in that many new, so it's, it's cool. I've kind of been all over in this video, haven't I? So the excavators just got here that are gonna be actually working with some of the gravel around the new shed and moving our fuel tanks off that concrete pad. They're actually a day or even too early, which is good, I won't complain about that. So we've got an area over there marked off. He's gonna put some flags up and level it off for himself. But I'm just gonna let him go to work and we'll check in on with him, check, check, on, check on in with him in a bit. The other thing we got to do is get those fuel tanks as empty as possible. So these guys are a little bit early, which is good, but uh, we're, uh, we got to get those diesel tanks empty. There's one big tractor full. We may as well also fuel up. Thunder! These tanks are nowhere near full because we knew we were going to have to be getting them empty real soon in order to move them, but they're a little more full than they should be. We had to give it our best guess. So they're gonna come and pump the fuel out. Anderson's or? Yeah, oh. Julie's. Okay. Um, somebody will come with a false truck. It's a lot of back and forth right now, but this is all gonna be really nice once it's all finished. And then hopefully, we don't ever have another storm go through that tears us apart and makes us rebuild the yard. Well, I did it again. I set the camera down for a few hours and forgot about it. Now it's a little bit after 10 o'clock at night. But there it is. That is the pad where the fuel tanks are gonna go. And I got a great big light from Northwest Lighting back here. So once we have the fuel tanks here, we can illuminate this area like crazy. We're gonna put some rock up here so that the water will flow and not wash this away. And I'd like to look into getting like a central island deal that we can plumb all the different fuel tanks to. So we have one station with the different hose reels and the nozzles on. And that's for another day though. We'll get these tanks moved first. Cat dog, you ready for bed? Probably not because you're a nocturnal animal, right? I don't know, cats are nocturnal? Seem like it. Hey. Oh, did I tip you over? All right, well, tell them thanks for watching.